Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's ECA Learning Zone webinar, our webinar series that we run with ECA Commercial Associates for ECA members and the wider electrotechnical industry. Uh, today, we're joined by Aaron Wallstone from uh, ECA Commercial Associate Doncaster Cables. Uh, Aaron will be talking to us today about new innovative cables that provide electricians with quicker, neater and easier installations. And co-hosting today, up on your screen now, we've got Darren Pranis, our own technical manager, um, who will uh, kick off the presentation shortly. But before I hand over to Darren, um, on your screen, you should have a question mark button. Uh, do please make use of this to ask any questions you have at any point in today's presentation, and we'll try to answer as many as we can at the end. Uh, finally, for me, the session is being recorded and will soon be available on our YouTube channel. That's at youtube.com forward slash ECA live. Um, over there, we've also got tons of exclusive videos uh, covering technical, legal, uh, employment topics, uh, and much more with new uploads every single week. Um, that's enough from me. I hope you enjoy today's presentation and over to you, Darren. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to uh, this webinar of Doncaster Cables. Uh, I think for many years, this subject hasn't exactly been riveting, a cable's been a cable, uh, but I think for the first time in, in probably 20 or 30 years, we're seeing a lot of innovation and a lot of new product in the market. And Aaron's gonna go over some of the groundbreaking cables innovation they've got to try and make our members' lives a little easier. So Aaron's gonna go over the presentation, send in your Q and A's and we'll answer hopefully as many as we can at the end. So I'll hand over to Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah, thank you very much, Darren. Um, yes, yeah, so we're going to go through three products, PV Ultra, EV Ultra, and then Earthshore. Before we do that, just very quickly wanted to give a brief history of our business um, and how we've got to this stage where we're now looking to really innovate to make electricians' lives easier. So we're in our 40th year manufacturing in the UK this year. And throughout all of my time here, I've been here 17 years now, but the whole ethos of the business is very electrician focused. So it's what value can we add? What decisions can we make to make electricians' lives easier? And we've been doing that in our products for, for decades, whether that's the flexibility of the copper wire or the composition of the compounds in, in Twin and Earth or flexibles. We have really tried to break the mold of it in the last few years with these new products where we've taken those same principles but set up R&D projects to try and take them to the next level and really add a lot of value and time saving for the electricians. So the first cable we're going to cover is PV Ultra. So PV Ultra um, specifically developed for meeting the DC installation side of the photovoltaic systems. Um, and it was very similar to EV Ultra, which came first, but it's later in this presentation, but we're aiming for quicker, neater, easier, and safer installations. So that's what the cable looks like. And I know I like to start with this diagram. It's quite a crude diagram that I've put together, but normally I would ask people to name the different components. So we have the solar array, DC isolator if it's being used, and then the inverter. And whenever we ask people what the black part is, the answer is normally it's the cable, the single core DC string that connects them. And what people generally don't consider then is the other cable management that goes with that cable. So those cables uh, are generally being installed in some form of conduit with elbows, saddles, etc. There's the labeling piece in there. So it's not just the cable that we're replacing we're trying to replace the single core DC cables and also all, the, all these other parts of cable management and accessories. And we're trying to replace all of that with one easy to use cable, um, which is PV Ultra. Just want to go through the construction of the product. So I've just listed them on the screen there. So the conductor is a tinned annealed copper plus five flexible conductor. The insulation is double insulated and cross-linked, and it fulfills all the requirements of BSEN 50618. So that's the standard, that is a solar cable. So the cores inside of PV Ultra 
um, are manufactured and tested to be solar cables in their own right. So these can be taken out onto the roof space um, and have the same level of performance, quality and expectations as what a normal solar cable would. The bedding is then called carbon tech. So that's something that we've developed and manufactured in our compound facility at Doncaster. So we've got a compound plant where we're blending our own PVC polymers. So carbon tech is the bedding material, very flexible, soft, nice and easy to work with. And then the sheathing grade is called solar tech. So again, a compound that we've formulated. Um, sheathing grade has got uh, really beefed up UV properties. So it then can be installed internally and externally, and it's got the same life expectancy as the cores inside, which is around 25 years. So to cover some of the technical advantages. So when we developed this product, we worked with a solar installer and we tried to tick as many of the boxes as we could to make installers' lives easier. So the core colors inside red and white, they were selected so they comply with the latest requirement of the wiring regs. So the red and white is a two wire on a DC power circuit. Two black cores have generally been used, I think just because it became standard, but it wasn't necessarily the right core color. So red and white would be the right core colors to use. And they also then save on the polarity side, the polarity testing at the end of the install. PV Ultra double insulated, which I mentioned before, but that then means that on the DC side of the inverter, it's meeting the class two or equivalent insulation as per that long clause of the wiring regs, which you'll be more familiar with than, than I am. Um, and this is a multi-core DC solution. So it's the first double insulated multi-core cable. Um, and it can now serve as a direct replacement for some of the multi-calls that had started to be used that weren't meeting those requirements. So there was a, a growing trend towards using steel wire armoured cables um, for these sorts of insulations, but they're only single insulated. So PV Ultra is the first double insulated multi-core DC solution. And then the voltage ratings there, this is what we're aiming for, so it's solar array to inverter or isolator every time. And then you're not having to plan the route as much, plan what conduit you need, the amount of bends, elbows, etc. It's just trying to make it a nice, easy install um, where you know that PV Ultra is going to get you from one place to the other and it can be routed inside, outside, underground, wherever it needs to go um, to get you that connection. Installer advantages, there's a big long list and I don't just want to sit and, and read them all out but it's very easy to handle it saves on installation time and costs we mentioned removing the conduits the further away that the inverter and the panels are the more benefits you get from the product before if you just had this um, an inverter in the roof which which is now changed but the benefits would be quite minimal but the longer the run the more benefits that you get standard mc4 connectors for the termination and there's a high tensile rip cord inside which makes it very easy to strip and i've got a short video in a moment to try and demonstrate that it also reduces the risk of accidental damage gives a cleaner neater installation takes out the need for dc junction boxes where there might have been one before and we feel it just looks more like a power cable and become safer. It was always a, something that played on my mind that these go in loft spaces and they look very much like coax when it's a single core um, six mil black DC cable. But now it looks like a mains cable. And then we've pre-marked on the outside danger DC cable live during daylight um, just to enhance that warning message further. So just a short video on the strip inside. So we've, um, we're not manufacturing these tools, but, but we stock and sell the tools. So we've got this PV Ultra stripping tool, which I found is the easiest way to do that. So when you get on the roof space, you could potentially need to strip back quite a lot of that sheathing compound. So with this stripping tool, we can set the depth and ring round, and then you can drag it along the outside of the sheathing, and you can pretty much remove as much sheathing as you want just by continuing to pull that off. 
we didn't want to promote the use of the stripping tool to take the bedding from the cores because there's a chance that you could actually nick the insulation there or cause some damage. So if you just remove the end of the bedding material from PV Ultra, we've built in um, a rip cord. So you'll see how easy the rip cord pulls through that carbon tech bedding because the formulation is so soft. So you can just strip that all the way down. And if you needed more, you can just carry on pulling it and you can quite quickly expose the solar cables that are inside there now. And it's the same on a, a two core or a four core cable. When you've got the four core cable, it can sometimes be, uh, you need a bit more force to pull it through. So it still pulls through the bedding material, but because of the shape inside there, sometimes you need to use a bit more force and it'll be easy. And then it'll get to a bit where there's a slightly bit more bedding, it'll be a bit more difficult to pull through. Um, but they're both easy to actually terminate, strip back and expose the cores. I just want to cover the range of PV Ultra. So we've currently got in the range a two core and a four core. Um, and we've now got tough sheath and a steel wire armored version. So we've started off with just two core and four core tough sheath in four mil and six mil. Uh, and we launched that at the solar and storage show last year, where we were fortunate enough to win product innovation of the year at the show, which we were, were shocked and were pleasantly surprised to receive. And we launched it at the show because we weren't too certain on the SWA side of the cable, and we'd got mixed responses and views when we actually spoke to different installers and bodies. Um, but those requests have carried on coming so we have now just launched a steel wire armed version um, and we've extended the range to also include 10 square millimeter so we've got two core and four core tough sheath and swa and all of those variants are in four six and ten millimeter square and then just want to cover one of the common questions that gets asked so a bit of installation forethought so when people first think of using this cable this is generally where most people would bring up and terminate pv ultra so you've got the uh, the black dot at the top left is the pv ultra and you've got the red and the white coming out um, and that seems to be people's go-to response but then you end up with quite a lot of waste because that red leg is a lot longer than the white leg um, so you can use the off cuts for the other bits down there the inverter but you end up with quite a lot of wastage in there. So what we try and advise people to do is put a bit more forethought into how they're wiring that up. And if you brought PV Ultra into the middle of the array, you can bring it up um, into the middle of the array, strip back the same amount, and then you've got the same length of the red and the white, so there's not as much wastage on the cable. And then what some people are now doing is thinking about how they're actually connecting the solar panels on the string. So rather than just going straight across like those green connections are showing, they're starting to look at this looping method. So they'll miss a panel, miss a panel, miss a panel and come back. And when they're doing that, they're now not wasting any PV Ultra and they're also stripping back a smaller amount of PV Ultra as well and they're terminating it at the same side. And then you've got the same principle on a two string system where it was the four core. So if you bring PV Ultra up into the middle, you're then not getting any waste because you strip it back and you get like an X shape um, going to each side. Some people are now preferring to change how they're connecting those up and they're making these two small U shapes. Um, various conversations about inductance and things like that when some people do a big U and then some people say that well, that's not the best practice because of creating a, a field inside there but doing this two small U shape seems to be quite a popular way where you're then stripping back a small amount and bringing PV Ultra into the middle but bringing it into the middle is uh, the best way to save on any cable waste. And then the common questions we've had so far Normally when I've explained this to people, they really like the products, they get quite excited, they can see the benefits and then they want one with more cores inside. Um, so we've been asked for 12 core, 20 core, or all, all sorts of different, different uh, scenarios. So we can manufacture that with the machinery we've got at Doncaster. 
However, there's more thought needed to how it terminates. So if you went back to those strings, the more strings you've got, the more you've got to actually spread those calls out to different points on the roof space and it can become quite tricky. We are now looking at a six core version because someone has assessed that and how it's terminated and they can see a lot of value in a, in a six core where they've got three strings and the termination side is going to come into the middle of those three strings and then work. Um, but two and four core seems to be the most popular where it's a single string or a two string potentially a six core coming out in the near future. And then the other common question we get is how do we seal the end? Um, and this varies massively depending on the install. So you've got the solar cables inside, they can be brought onto the roof space on their own. So some people will bring PV Ultra into the loft space, they'll strip it back in the loft and then they will take um, the red and white onto the roof space on their own and then the cables enclosed in the loft space anyway perhaps doesn't need sealing or some minor form of sealing. If it's uh, an east-west roof space the, some of them are bringing it into the loft space and then splitting one pair out one side of the roof one out the other. Some are fastening it underneath the array um, so there's just a, a massive amount of different installation methods. Um, some people are just taping that end, some people are putting it inside a junction box and then bringing the solar cores outside. Some are using jelly filled junction boxes. I think this is probably my favourite that I've found. So there are these heat shrink boots um, and they look quite big when you first get them but they do shrink down quite a lot. They're originally designed for like medium voltage mains cables but you get these heat shrink boots ready available on, on the internet i found but wholesalers may also stock them and are starting to stock them as well. Um, but you've got these four legs or two legs and it shrinks down and creates a nice neat seal um, between the sheathing and the four solar cables or two solar cables that are coming out. So that's my quick whistle stop tour of PV Ultra. Uh, and we're trying to fit another two products in the time slot and then take some questions at the end of it. So it will go straight on to EV Ultra. So this was um, preceded PV Ultra in the, in the development of products, but just want to go through this. In a nutshell, it's the innovation of combining power and data um, inside one cable. And the first thing we probably should cover then is, is voltage bands and the wiring regulations, and probably why no one had done this before we start the R&D project. So it, it comes across as quite clear in the wiring regs and everyone's taught it when they go through their apprenticeship or college that you need to segregate power and data um, and that band one, band two circuits can't be contained in the same system um, and it seems quite clear cut. So when we were looking at the development of the products and looking into the wiring regs, there was these two clauses which come straight after it. So the segregation is needed except where one of the following methods is adopted. So every cable or conductor is insulated for the highest voltage present, which that is what you get in EV Ultra. So it's not just a normal data cable in there, they're insulated um, at the same nominal voltage. And then you also have to consider this proximity of communication cables with the power cables and the electrical interference that can then come from there and that's where we've got what we call a super screen but it's a, a high quality screening around those data cables and that in a nutshell is the very basic principle of it so we've got the same nominal voltage and we've got a super screen and that allows us to combine power and data into one cable and then comply with the wiring regulations on those two extracts. That is a very simplified version of it so it's a lot more complicated than that to actually ensure consistently conforming product and through our R&D that we did before we actually released any we went through a lot of different machines, processors, 
um, just loads of different things in the actual manufacturing side before we could get a design that was happy with. But the way that the machines are set up, the tensions, the speeds, the lay lengths, etc., all add to getting that data transmission that you want um, on a regular conforming basis. We want to touch on compliance. So EV Ultra has basic approval. And it's basic approval to a certificate of assessed design. So EV Ultra is CAD 045. And I've got a slide at the end where I'm going to explain what basic is in a bit more detail. Because it's you need to be aware about departing from the regulations. So there's no British standard for EV Ultra. And there can't be one yet because it's a brand new innovation if there was a british standard it wouldn't be an innovation and something groundbreaking so because there's no british standard or harmonized standard installing these cables is then a departure from the regulations and we'd like to cover how departures are allowed so we found this clause in there so new materials and inventions not very commonly used for cable but i think that was put in there for some of the more fast moving technologies but if there is a new material or invention, um, then you can depart from the regulations as long as it gives at least the same degree of safety. And the other really important point is that where you are choosing to use equipment or a cable that's not covered by a British or harmonised standard, the onus is on the person responsible for that insula installation to confirm that it provides at least the same degree of safety. So you can't pass that responsibility on to anybody else. You just need to be able to prove that you've done as much as you can to say it offers at least the same degree of safety. And that's why on this product, with it being so groundbreaking, we decided to get the basic approval. We wanted to make it as easy as possible for installers to be able to use EV Ultra and have the confidence that they could depart from the regulations because Doncaster Cables have done these tests, they're a reputable UK manufacturer, but also the largest cable laboratory in the country has also done these tests. They've got a certificate of assessed design and they're regularly coming to the factory and repeatedly taking samples and testing back to that original specification that was agreed to make sure that they are uh, fit, fit for purpose. And the big piece on the basic CAD is then that wording. So that onus then passes on to BASEC, although you're still responsible for the departure, when you've got to explain why you departed and why you thought it was the same degree of safety, you've got BASEC, the British Approval Service for Cables, actually giving you that statement and making it a bit easier to say, well, this is why I did that, because they've got all the test equipment and they've developed the standard and they're testing it to show that it offers at least the same degree of safety um, as the equivalent 7671 cable. A few bits on features and benefits for the installer and the homeowner as well on this one. So it works well with um, EV chargers that require the data connectivity. Some chargers don't require that, although it is becoming quite popular to install EV Ultra anyway, just for future proofing. So we've got quite a few contractors we're aware, we're aware of where they'll use EV Ultra, normally the Category 5 4 pair one, and they'll put that in just in case the client calls them back in a few years' time and choose the different charger, which does then need um, CT clamps or data connectivity. One cable to procure, easy to store on the van, very easy to route, standard termination, standard glands, flexible, future-proof, and it just looks nicer for the homeowner. So you haven't got these data cables that are then cable tied onto a mains cable, um, which is probably a conversation in its own about segregation because that's probably not right. And a lot of people don't use the right data cable anyway, they'll use internal ones, but it takes all that out and just gives a nicer looking finish for the homeowner. Um, and then we haven't included it in this presentation, but the factory at Doncaster, we're very sustainable and very green. So we've got 100% renewable energy running the factory with zero waste to landfill, etc. 
and we could probably talk another 40 minutes about all those things but just put that there as another line that we're very sustainable and very green and then install the feedback we received so many positive comments from people when we launched this and we continue to do that today um, it's just saving people people time and it's either allowing people to go and do another install um, or the best one that I got is when I went to a show and somebody only wanted to install two chargers a day it used to take him all day and now he went home earlier and picked his, his daughter up from school <laughs> which was quite a, a nice feeling but it just saves you that time on the install and just makes it that bit easier one of the comments there could this be used to supply an outbuilding instead of running separate cable and a data feed or is it just for EV use only EV Ultra as a name it was designed originally for smart chargers where they needed those CT clamps or data connection but it's now grown into all sorts of applications so we've got anywhere where you need power and data really so uh, CCTV outdoor home offices gate entry is a big one where you've got a telecoms panel and a motor for a gate caravan sites solar etc and the range has then grown massively with that so we've now got single phase and three phase so three core and five core four millimeter squared all the way up to 16 millimeter squared and we've got tough sheath and then steel wire armored versions and then we've just launched one with two data cables so two four pair data cables inside because there's some installations where somebody wants multiple cts and then a hardwired data connection as well so we've got a, a massive range i think there's 19 different variations of of ev ultra And then the final product is Earthshore, which we've launched very recently. Um, this one takes less explaining, I think, but I've got a few slides for it. <laughs> but you'll see from the picture, it's essentially a twin in Earth with a pre-identified green yellow CPC. So we started this project some time ago. It was a lot trickier than we originally thought so we've been asked multiple times over the years why we haven't actually made twin and earth with a, a green yellow cpc um lots of reasons for it it's a very heavily standardized industry in cable manufacturing there's never really been a big appetite to do anything with twin and earth because it's so commoditized and it really is a loss leader and very low margin products once you add the insulation the cable gets bigger and then it doesn't fit standard clips and then there's the approval piece where i've not, I've not met an electrician yet who wouldn't install who would install twin and earth that wasn't basic approved so there's quite a lot of things to overcome there which we've now done with earthshore so earthshore comes with pre-identified green yellow cpc it fits standard twin and earth clips so the sheathing's actually slightly smaller than a normal twin and earth but then we re-engineered and made a special compound for um, earthshore sheathing which then enhances the mechanical and electrical properties so it still complies with all of the bs requirements that a normal twin and earth would and then we went to basic and we agreed a cad um, and got the basic approval with all those enhancements built into it So again, we're going to cover the same bit. So it's a new product innovation, which means there's no British standard available. This should then be recorded as a departure from the regulations as well. And bringing the same slide through again there as well. So where equipment isn't used, the onus is on the person responsible for the installation to provide, um, make sure it provides at least the same degree of safety. And that's where I thought I'd just touch on the BASEC bit for the two products we've spoke about. So BASEC um, are a service where you, you pay them to come and audit your facility. So us in the UK, they will come on a regular basis. They audit the factory, warehouse sales. They make sure that we're operating to a specific PCR, the BASEC PCR. And they'll come um, unannounced through the year. And do audits and then they'll come about another four times a year and do regular audits on the site 
And during that time, the random were taking samples from the factory as it goes through, and then they're taking those to their lab. Um, so it can be up to 200 cable samples a year that go from the factory and then to the basic laboratory. They then do the tests and then they report back. Um, and you, if you have any deviations or failures, they'll then address that with you. So it's just an ongoing testing program where they're coming and testing all of your procedures, control measures, calibrations, etc. But then also continually testing the cables are fit for purpose to the standard or to the basic CAD as it goes through. So it gives you a lot of confidence um, that the cables are right, especially in an industry where there's been a massive decline in the last 20 years and the quality of cable has declined a lot as people have chased that lowest price in the market. So the basic mark and approval there is really just to set a minimum and you can go well above the minimum, which we do as a business and we choose to try and add value wherever we can. But basic approval is really guaranteeing that you're getting that minimum quality in, in a product. Um, and that's why we've got the certificate of assessed design for Earthshore, again, to make that departure. If you choose to use that cable and get the benefits and the time savings, um, there's that basic approval that you can use when you're departing from the regs. And a similar sort of statement on there, extensively tested, meets or exceeds the functional and safety requirements of equivalent BSEN as referenced in 7671. So just wanted to touch on the range before I've got a very short video about um, just stripping the cable back. So we only launched this a month or two ago now. So we've got two core, one mil, one five and two five. Those products are already launched. They're available from electrical wholesalers. Um, and the rest are either pending or coming soon. So we've got decided to do it in a, in a stage launch, get some feedback, make sure people are happy with the products. So the three cores should be coming next quite soon, one mil and one five. And then we'll be looking at the four, six, 10 and 16 mil um, in the near future as well. So the, the benefits on the four, six, 10 and 16 are probably less so because the other ones have got more terminations but we are being asked for those bigger sizes uh, where people have used Earthshore already and have seen the benefits. I think people just don't want to buy and carry sleeving anymore. I think, I think one of the big benefits is it's the most common thing people leave in the van and then they have to go back to the van and get it so people seem to be having this push to try and get rid of it altogether. Um, and then I just filmed this quick video so just some different stripping techniques. So this is the tool that I found I prefer. Um, so in you just slide it over the sheathing as it comes through and then you can remove the outer sheathing and then I use it to take the, the blue, brown and, and green yellow off. It's not the only way to strip the product. I think there's someone on YouTube, I think he's tried every possible tool imaginable. I think he's got about seven videos where he uses different ones. Um, but if you prefer to use croppers you can still do that just by nicking it and the green yellow will then pull through the sheathing that's on there um, and then I did the similar sort of thing with uh, side cutters as well so if I just fast forward a bit to the side cutters one um, but again similar sort of thing so you can just get that green yellow and you can pull it through the sheathing probably only thing to be a bit careful is if you pull it right back on itself you put quite a lot of strain on the green yellow material um, but most people aren't doing that. We haven't had many issues with, with that as it goes through. So a variety of ways to strip the sheathing back and expose the blue, brown and green, yellow CPC. And then that's the end of the slides. So I want to leave enough time for questions. I don't know if any have come in or not yet. Um, but we'll take any questions that we've got on three products. If anyone wants me to go back to any of the slides, go into more detail than I can do. I think we've got um, a couple coming in. Um, I think, first of all, let's uh, focus for our members on departures. So, as we said, BS7671 does allow for that. And where it says equipment, it also does include cable because cabling is a wiring system and that does come under equipment i'm very fortunate that yes you can depart 
uh, Doncaster cables have the CAD files available, isn't that right, Aaron, for our members to download, and they can accompany them with your certificates. And more importantly, that doesn't affect your ECA warranty because you are allowed to depart. Um, the absence of a British standard here, as Aaron has said, is because it, you know, literally there isn't one. So they've taken the British standards and they've gone far and beyond them. So if we've got members today on the call or listening later, if you are going to depart, you fill out that on the form, you attach the technical file that you'll get with the um, sort of CAD file you get from BASEC, and that meets the equivalent of, and you don't have to worry about your ECA sort of warranty being affected because that's that you're allowed to do that. So hopefully that clarifies for our members sort of the ECA position on that as well. I've uh, got a question here for you, Aaron. Uh, could you use, and this goes on to what you can use your cables for more than what you think, could you use it for minus 48 volt telecom systems in blue and white? Have you thought about that one? Which cable is that for the uh, for the PV Ultra one? It says for PV Ultra, it does say for in, if minus 48 color telecoms, blue and white. I still think that's um, I still think that's red and white. I think it's just plus plus and minus. Um, I think it's table 54.1. The identification is is red and white. So yeah, could you use it on minus 48 volt systems? Um, I have to look into it to be a definitive answer. But there's nothing ringing any alarm bells as to why you wouldn't be able to use that. Um, I imagine it might be a bit overkill, maybe, but I'd have to look into that and come back to you for a definitive answer. But electrically in, in the product, I can't see why not. It's um, it, it's the same classification as copper. Yeah, I think you said it's rated to, what, 1,500 volt DC? Yeah. So I think you said before that. That one. When you start to introduce these cables as well, so I was going to ask you, are you going to do a cable with a CT and um, uh, an Ethernet cable in? But you've already said you're going to produce one with, with two with two Ethernets in there anyway, so that overcomes uh, you know a lot of those technical challenges where you have to have clamps because of the smart charging regulations and decent connectivity. Yeah, we did we did both. So what? Um... What some of the EV installers had, had started to do is they were using the four pair data cable and they were still running Ethernet and the CTs. So you, you only need two pairs to run um, an, an internet connection, an Ethernet connection, not all four. So they were using two pairs for CTs and then two pairs um, for, the, for the data connection. Um, but someone then asked us for, I think they wanted three three pairs for CTs and a data connection. So we did EV Ultra Plus. Um, so we're just trying to cover as many as we can. Yeah. Do you see that branch now into the other technology? So battery storage where you might need comms and power as well? Yeah, some people are. Um, it, one of the things on the slide where it was other other areas. So some people have started to do that in the in the early stages but it, it's really just anywhere where you've got that power and, and data connection but there's such a wide range of, of uses um i think the oddest one that i've had is for a hot tub so someone rung and asked whether they could use it for a hot tub which i didn't understand what they were doing but they said this hot tub had a data connection and then as someone was driving home from work they'd be able to choose what color lights they wanted and what music they wanted playing um, but it's really just anything where you've got that that power and data needed it'd be suitable for smart smart hot hot tubs no matter wow. you know i'll blame them for that can you um you spoke about being sustainable earlier uh i think i saw somewhere in a post that you have a lot of off off cuts do you want to explain how that can benefit some of our members today yeah so we've got um so sustainability on site we, we've been on this sustainable journey for quite some time now so to, to recap some of the stuff we've got on site, mentioned for you in there, but we 100% renewable energy, zero waste to landfill. We segregate all of us waste, and about just over 94% of our production waste gets sent for reuse, so not just recycling. So we're trying to find the best possible life. So the PVC waste will go made into house pipes, as an example. 
Um, so we've got all these different bits, enclosed water systems saving 25 million litres of water a year. But one of the, the big parts where we still have struggled to get rid of is the, is the short lengths of um, SWAs or SYs, etc. So we're making in master reels, and the reel might be 2,000 metres or 2,030 metres. We sell to electrical wholesale and distribution, and they will choose lengths that suit their racks and, and the lengths that they can handle. So it might be 200 metres, 250 metres. So at every drum that we make, we end up with a short length, and it could be 12 metres or 36 metres and anything in between, really. But those lengths aren't really desirable for a wholesaler or a distributor that are then looking to cut from that and supply um, an electrician. So it's been a problem for, for many, many years. We've decided to try and tackle that. So we've set up a, an online store, which is store.doncastercables.com. Um, and rather than just sending these short lengths for recycling, because they've all been electrically tested, there's nothing wrong with them, um, we've just put a selection of those on the website up for sale where we'll then dispatch and ship them out. And it, it's gone quite well so far. There's definitely some challenges. The, the price of raw materials changed so much um, that the pricing can be either really good or, or really poor. It just depends when the cable was made. Um, and then it's not the best thing to ship with cable. It's what the class is ugly freight. So it's quite, quite weighty and no one really wants to handle it. So there's some shipping charges in there. But people are finding um, uses for it and finding it useful. And, and there is sort of semi-regular purchase there where electricians are buying these lengths and, um, and doing their bit to save a bit of cable waste. Good. So in terms of you know, members meeting their CSR requirements, if they want yeah, short drums, and they can just go to your store, see what you've got, order it direct. Yeah, yeah, they can do that. Um, if any of the members have have got clients where they're needing to meet any sort of uh, ESG, CSR sort of things, we can have a more detailed conversation with them, or maybe we can put something together for the ECA to distribute. Um, but we'll be carbon neutral scope one and two by the end of this year, which is a a big, a big claim and a big statement um, because of the high energy industry that we've got. But the work that we've done will be carbon neutral scope one and two. We've only got a tiny bit left that we need to offset. We've got an option of low carbon copper. So we've got a relationship. We've got wire drawing on site and we draw our own wires. But we buy eight millimeter rod from somebody who melts down the cathodes. We've been trading with them for over 30 years and we've got this relationship where we can now buy low carbon copper so this is the co2 embodiment in that copper is less than half of what normal copper is in the marketplace so it just depends on the the customers that that your members have got and where, whether that's worthwhile but we've got lots of different options and ways that we can help from a sustainability point of view by by using and specifying our cables we got um, some more questions coming in. I know we spoke, Aaron Mealy, about the other uses and could you use it in telecom? So generally in sort of telco cables, unlike solar PV, they're, a, they're an earthed system rather than an unearthed system. So the colours would change. Would, you, would it right. be if, a, if one of our members wanted one which was blue, for example, different colour codings, would you um, consider that? Is that something they can get in touch with you? If they were looking at sort of telco projects or a change in the colours? Yeah, it's something we'd have a, a look at. We're still developing that range as we speak, so we're assessing different things. It's it's definitely possible. Um, the bit that's normally challenging is the minimum order quantity. So so for us to start a lineup when we insulate, you, you basically it's about 250 metres long before you even get to the, the take up drum. So the, you've got 250 metres of start up, and then that's on each core, and then the bedding stage and the sheathing stage, etc. So the minimum order quantity to actually commission a run gets quite big. Um, but depending on the volumes, and we can certainly have a look at it and see if there's more members that need the same thing or, or those requirements. But um, yeah, nothing's impossible. So, what, so if you want five or ten metres, that's an obvious no. But if you're in, if if you're in the thousands. 
<laughs> if you're into thousands, yeah, then it's worth having a conversation. But I have had a few people ring up and like, I need 10 meters of this cable with six, six calls and three of them are different sizes. And yeah, we, we can't do that. Um, it's quite a high volume production that we got. We're making over a million meters a week um, with a cable from the factory. I think what you've highlighted there is actually just how long the production lines are, not in terms of length of your factory, but the cable run. You know, you, yeah. don't, you don't start putting products onto a drum until it's exhausted 250 meters round your factory. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, someone's actually said um, very cheekily, free samples. Um, I'll leave that with you, actually. <laughs> free samples, what, what would they like, 100 meters of six mil four core PV Ultra? I don't, I don't think they said that, but I think it's probably best what to contact you via your website. Yeah, I know when you first uh, you had it, you had it everywhere. I don't know if you got it with wholesalers or certain wholesalers you sell through where they can see this cable. Yeah, we can do that. Um, if somebody does want to get in touch, all seriousness, if, if they contact the sales sales at doncastercables.com or just give them a call, they'll try and put them in touch with the nearest wholesaler or distributor um that we have a partnership and a working relationship with and that's the best place to actually see the products um if somebody wanted a, a short piece to actually have a look at and play with and, and strip back then um we can send some some short pieces out it's not a problem either um but yeah if you just want to get in touch with the the sales team they, they always do the best to try and help wherever they can and then put them in touch with the best way to get the answers brilliant i don't think we've got any more questions for you Aaron I think that's uh, all the questions used up for today so probably a time to uh, bring Omar back into the room once see him pop up in a moment that's right Darren oh, get my webcam back on there we go um, no more questions on our side uh, so I think uh, we can wrap up there for today uh, thank you very much once again to our presenters, Aaron Wollstow, Darren Cranis. Uh, reminder to our viewers that you can catch all of our Learning Zone webinars on our YouTube channel, um, youtube.com forward slash ECA Live. And uh, if you are an ECA member, do log on to my ECA. Um, we've got a whole load of uh, member support there, not just technical, um, legal, uh, employment, much, much more, and new. Uh, brand new videos coming out on, on YouTube uh, to help support your businesses uh, with new uploads every single week. So do stay tuned for those. Thank you very much, guys, and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks ever so much. Yes, thank you very much.